In this skill, we're going to be looking at transition metal ions and looking at their formulae and their names. So this is slightly different than what we've done so far. So looking at our periodic table, so far, when we've been making ionic compounds, we've assumed that everything in group one will make a plus one ion, everything in group two will make a plus two ion, everything in group 13 will make a plus three ion, and then we've assumed that everything in group 15 will make a minus three ion, everything in group 16 will make a minus two ion, and everything in group 17 will make a minus one ion. So that's what we've assumed so far. However, we actually have a lot of elements in our periodic table that don't follow such simple rules. Most of those are in that central block of our periodic table, the transition metals. So I'll highlight that now. This is our block of transition metals here. And there are some other elements as well, mostly metals that are down here in this block that's called post-transition metals. So all of these elements here often form multiple different ions. So for example, uh, copper might form a copper two plus iron or a copper one plus iron. There are multiple different options that it could form. The reason why is to do with the electron configuration. If you remember when we learned we have the S and the P sub energy levels. And then we also have D sub energy level. And when we get to the fourth period, which is where the transition metal block starts, we start having electrons in that D sub energy level. And when these elements form ions, they might give up one electron or multiple electrons from that D subshell. Um, and therefore they have different possible iron charges that might form. So to, to help us identify which iron they are, we have a, a special way of naming them. So first let's just figure out the name of our iron here. We've got SN2+, so let's go in our product table and find SN. Here it is here. So SN, that's tin. So here we've got tin. And the name of the transition metal ion is just the name of the metal. There's no special ending required. Then we also have a Roman numeral, which tells us the charge on that ion. So here it's a tin two plus ion. And so we choose the Roman numerals two to represent that. So this is important because tin might form other possible ions. So by having tin two in the name, we're telling the reader what type of compound is formed and the type of ion that we have in there.